Hey, I think I'm live. Hey there. Welcome, everybody. Well, I don't see anybody yet, but welcome. I'm here today because I um, wanted to start coming live on Instagram. Um, certainly a, a platform that I have neglected as far as coming live. So thank you. Hey, Kimberly. Hi, how are you? Um, hi, ladies. I'm so glad that you're here today with me. I um, wanted to just come and just talk to you a little bit about these large fibroids because I get so many emails. I get emails um, and uh, DMs asking me can you shrink large fibroids what to do about large fibroids and so really in a sense the same thing you do for a large a small fibroid you do the same thing for a large fibroid but i just want to give you some hope that it is possible to shrink vi large fibroids and give you three tips that you can start using today to help you on that journey um if you don't know who I am, my name is Chelsea Knudsen. I am a certified holistic health coach, a detoxification specialist, and I am the creator of the 90 Day Walk to Fibroid Freedom group coaching program where I help women to heal naturally from not just fibroids, but all kinds of reproductive issues. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can go to the link in my bio at what Chelsea eats and you can learn all about that. But um, before I get into the topic, I wanted to just let you guys know, those of you who are struggling with um, either very severe anemia or iron deficiency and you're just tr having trouble um, getting out of it, I'm having a workshop next week. Actually, it's gonna be next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I will be teaching a group of ladies how to reverse anemia. If you guys don't know, you can go look on my YouTube channel. Years ago, I struggled with anemia extremely bad. I was so sick. I could not work. I um, like really was at death's door, to be honest with you. And I came out of uh, anemia and it wasn't by taking a bunch of iron pills or anything like that. So I'm going to share my strategy with women. It is a paid workshop but it's an easy way to work with me and um, without going through my 90 day program to get some information about how to heal anemia. So um, the other thing is I wanted to thank everybody that purchased, made their, first, made their purchases of my herbal blends. I am just so grateful. Um, you guys have sold me out of a couple of products, so we're working to get those back up online. So thank you so much. And I hope that they really bless your life. And um, also, if you are interested in the 90 day program, the next one starts on October 3rd. Um, so let me get right into this topic. Oh, and also, if you're watching the replay of this, can you uh, type replay in the comment section so that I know that you're here so I can come say hello because I love um, community, I like interacting with you in the comment section as well. And if you have any questions, please uh, chat them in um, during the live because I will answer questions when I'm done talking about these three tips that can help you shrink fibroids naturally. So thanks for joining me, ladies. Okay, so the first thing that you have to address when you are um, learning to shrink large fibroids is your food. Like there's there's no way to actually get around it. Um, often people will sign up for my uh, foods to avoid list and they'll they'll email me back and say, well, you've taken all the foods that I enjoy off of the list. What am I supposed to eat? Well, I get it. Well, the foods that we've been eating is the thing that has been causing the problem. So we have to learn a new way to feed our bodies. The f if you're having issues with fibroids and you feel like you eat healthy, for example, then maybe you're not eating healthy enough. There's still some things that you need to remove from your diet for a time so that you can get well. Um, because 
well, first of all, you'll never be able to eat garbage and order and and keep your reproductive system healthy or keep your body healthy in general. But we must take out the foods to avoid, and the major foods to avoid are alcohol, dairy, meat, caffeine, even fish, ladies. I know you're just kind of like, oh my goodness, grain, um, and um. Those are the major ones that I can think of off the top of my head. But for a pretty um, healthy list, just go to my bio and download the foods to avoid list. It has a complete list on how you um, will be able to, what you need to do to, what you need to get rid of so that you can start on your healing journey. And you might be saying, well, if you, if you take away this, what do I eat? Well, I have a list, I mean, all kinds of pictures of things that I eat. Um, on my Instagram page, I have a seven day, two seven day meal plans. I have a YouTube channel that has recipes, has a recipe section. My website used to have a recipe section, but it's being revamped, and I'm hoping that that's going to be up uh, up again soon. But ladies, we got you've got to change what you're putting in your body in order for you to get on a healing journey. There's really no other way. There's no magic. There's no magic pill, even though you see all these people um, saying, oh, yeah, take this herb or take this magic formula. This is going to shrink fibroids. And maybe you might have a one off here and there. But for the general, for the average person, there's no miracle cure out there. You have to take care of yourself by controlling what you're putting in your mouth and and caring about what you're putting in your mouth. And if you find that you don't care about what you're putting in your mouth, then there's a deeper issue there. And that segues into my next thing that we have to deal with if we want to reverse um, reproductive issues or shrink fibroids. And that is getting getting to the root of what's going on in your emotional well-being. What is at the root of why you got fibroids in the first place? Why would you choose to eat garbage when you know that it is destroying your body, for example? And I had to deal with that. And sometimes I still fight with those thoughts like, you know, because the world is eating all kinds of stuff. How come I can't eat all of those things? Well, I can't eat all those things because I'm susceptible to falling into womb issues. That's why I can't uh, eat it. And I don't want to go back to where I came from. So that's why I can't eat it. Um, but what started it in the first place? Did what kind of traumas did you have when you were growing up? Like, did you, you know, what kind of home did you grow up in? Were you raped? Were you molested? Um, were you divorced? Did were you cheated on? Were you mistreated? Like, what's going on? Did your mother not treat you well? Like, what is going on at the heart of the issue? What what thing happened? to trigger your reproductive issues. And then sometimes even, it might not even be something that you're dealing with. It could be a family issue, like a generational issue that is affecting you emotionally. So let me just use, let me use this for example. Say you're always anxious and your mother's always anxious and your grandmother's always anxious. Well, why? What happened? Why are you anxious? God says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer, make your request known to God. And He and the peace of God will rule in your heart. We're not supposed to be perpetually anxious like that. So why are you anxious? So dealing with your emotional stuff, taking the time to actually sit down and figuring out like, okay, what is going on? How am I feeling? Make a list. Are you sad? Are you depressed? Are you... Are you scared? Like what's going on in your emotional well-being? And then getting to a place where you learn how to deal with that. And I do teach people how to deal with that emotional side of things. I have an emotional healing program, but I also deal with the emotional sides of the side of things in my 90-day program too. So if you need help, that there is help um, in, in the 90-day program as well. And um, lastly... I was, I was, uh, I might give you uh, two, th four tips instead of three. I think that's what I'm going to do because um, this one is really important, but the, the one that I wanted to talk about first um, is just as important, but I think that we really have to 
what I'm about to tell you is probably going to open your eyes and, and, and you'll, you'll probably understand why the fibroids developed in your body a little bit more. What I'm about to tell you, starch feeds fibroids, starch feeds fibroids. What's starch? What has starch in it? Like a lot of starch, bread, whatever, what are people eating? Bread sandwiches with bread, um, pasta, um, rice, um, potatoes, anything with starch in it, like that is a heavy starch, starchy vegetable, starchy. They feed fibroids. And I'm not saying that you can't have any starchy vegetables. Like you can, like some people might disagree with this, like, you can have carrots, for example, but I think you you need to limit the the, the starchy car, uh, carbohydrate carbohydrates you eat. If you have beans, you can't be eating like five cups of beans in the day. That's too many. That's too much beans because it has starch in it. Especially some beans have more starch in it than others. So you really have to be careful about what you're eating. So if I have beans, for example, and I don't have them very often, I do have them, but not very often. It's not even, it's not more than, you know, once a week. Sometimes I don't even have them at all. There's periods of time when I don't have them, but when I do eat them, I will eat the beans and it'll be a quantity, no more than a cup of beans. And I will fill that, that pot of beans or that recipe of beans with other vegetables so that it's filling for me. And, I, and what I call beans and cooked vegetables, I call them neutral foods. You would learn that in my 90-day program. Those are neutral foods. The healing foods, the, the ones that go and clean, cleanse the food, cleanse the body are more like your raw foods, like your fruits and your leafy greens and your raw vegetables. Those are the things that help to cleanse your body more so than eating a cooked meal. Eating a cooked meal um, that is compliant, meaning it's safe for fibroids, um, is neutral. It's just so you don't lose your sanity, so that you don't feel like you're like going off the deep end if you um, if you are somebody who likes to eat cooked food. Anyway, but my point is the starch. We've got to get off this starch. People ask me, well, can I have spelt pasta? And and even though it's not really starchy, spelt pasta is not really starchy. It's a better grain. It's still not good for fibroids because of what it does when it gets in your belly. Because when you start eating that, you're not cleansing. And it acts like glue whenever you put it in your stomach. A lot of people might not agree with that, but I have worked with so many women and they insist on eating these these other these pastas that are um, not um, consistent with um they're 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 an alternative to the regular pasta um and they want to do that because they're trying to mimic their old foods like get off of that stuff like stop eating that at least while you're trying to heal and then and then everybody's going and shooting in the dark saying okay i'm following this you know fibroid healing program but i see some of the stuff that people are eating and i'm like no you need to be eating raw fruits and vegetables with a small amount of cooked food and then periods of time where you don't eat any cooked food. You're cleansing. So there's so there's 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 a process to this whole healing process. So get off the starch. So so far um I talked about the foods to avoid list. Get that list if you don't have it. If you have it, dig it up and Print it out and post it somewhere. Put it on your phone where you can see it, whatever. Deal with your emotions. That's number two. Number three is starch. Get off the starch. If it has starch in it, if you don't know what a starchy vegetable is or what starch is, go Google it. And that's rice and potatoes and um, just starchy food in general. And here's number four. Um, I was starting with um, three tips, so but here's number four, and this is very important, ladies. I grew, I'm mean, gonna tell you in just a second, I grew up drinking Kool-Aid. I would take two packets of Kool-Aid, whatever flavor my mother had in there, and I would put it in a big, big uh, pitcher, and I'd put those in there, and I would just take the bag of sugar, and I would pour the sugar 
in the Kool-Aid container and water, mix it up, and I would drink that. And I was drinking sugar water all day. No wonder I, and, and sugar is the starch. Sugar turns to starch. That's what it is. So like regular cane sugar. So if you drink pop or soda, whatever you call it, if you drink juice from the store and stuff like that, it's sugar water and it's starch and it's feeding the fibroids. Okay. So we need to learn how to hydrate. Kool-Aid was not hydrating me. It felt like I was when I would come in from outside playing and I would drink my sugar water. It wasn't hydrating me. It was destroying my reproductive system even when I was a little child. No wonder I had problems from the time I started my, my cycle. But um, we need to hydrate. Hydrate. So how do you hydrate? You use um, the cleanest water that you can find. I like spring water. Mountain Valley Spring is, is probably one of my favorite brands out there. And then I like distilled water. I distill my own water and there's a whole bunch of controversy about distilled water, about how it leaches your minerals from your body. And I think it's hogwash. It is one of the waters that your body can absorb and you can use. And if you're worried about it leaching, you know, your minerals, I will put some minerals in the water. Like just add some minerals in the water. Um, so spring water and distilled water are my two favorites, but whatever water you can find that's clean, just drink it and just don't drink out of plastic bottles that um, are, that are not BPA free. And if you can avoid drinking out of plastic bottles altogether, then that's great. Um, but try to find a brand that is a, has a BPA free bottle. Um, and the next way you hydrate yourself is by eating raw fruits and vegetables because they are full of water. Water is in... The most water is in um, fruit, especially like your summer fruits, like watermelon, like any kind of melon. And then you have your berries and then you have your grapes and then you have your citrus. Those are all water packed fruits. So we hydrate our bodies by taking in these vegetables and fruits that are full of water. So when you cook the vegetable or the fruit, it takes the water out when you eat it raw, it has the water in it and your body knows how to just extract the water from those fruits and vegetables so that your body can be nice and hydrated. But you need to drink. And the reason I brought up the Kool-Aid uh, uh, comment earlier is because when I was little, I didn't like to drink water. And then I carried that into adulthood. I drank Pepsi and Kool-Aid. Pepsi and Kool-Aid, most of my early adult life. Then in my late 20s, I started learning how important it was to drink water. And so I would try to up it, but I never really hit the mark as far as how much water I was actually supposed to drink or how hydrated I was supposed to be until I started learning about juicing when I was in my late 30s. And then now the way I hydrate myself is through my distilled water or spring water or my fruits and vegetables, or by um, drinking juices, fresh pressed juices. That th That's how you hydrate. And the reason that you need hydration is because fibroids are like a ball and they're hard. And some of them are calcified. It doesn't matter if they are calcified or not, you can still shrink them. But you need to be hydrating, flushing water rich, goodness throughout your body so that it can rinse the fibroid away so to speak i mean it doesn't quite rinse it away but the more hydration you have the more you're going to be able to move those fibroids out now let me just say this you know how you cook something and the pot is all stained and you have to soak it well that's sort of what i mean by hydration it's kind of like you soak your body in the water of the from the fruits and vegetables and from the clean water sources and just like the pan over time that junk that's stuck in the pan will loosen up and you're able to clean it that's what happens in your body the more you soak the body in the hydration the more the fibroids or whatever is in your body that needs to go, toxic waste, will move out. So that's why it's so important to hydrate. Now, 
if you do all this hydration and you're still putting garbage in, that's not going to help you. So you got to you got to get a balance of all four of these things that I just talked about. So get the foods to avoid out, get it out, get it out. And if you're mentally, you're feeling like you can't handle it, then you need to deal with the emotions behind why you can't and, and why you got the fibroids in the first place. Then you need to get the, make sure that you don't eat. You're not eating starchy carbohydrates like bread and pasta and rice and things like that. And then hydrate your body like it's going out of style. So anyway, let me see if I have any questions. Hopefully I do. It doesn't look like I have any questions. I don't see any. Nobody asked me anything. Is that true? There's 17 people on here. Nobody's asked me any questions. Let me see. <clears throat> Hi, Chelsea. It's Rosie. I'm excited. I should be getting my order today. Awesome. Let me know how it goes. I'm excited for you. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't look like I have any questions here. Well, but about buckwheat, no. The only um thing that is anywhere close to anything that I would tell you to, to eat as far as um anything that's anywhere like a grain and then I don't even suggest eating these every day or in large quantities like you still have to watch it is quinoa fonio f-o-n-i-o um wild rice not black rice wild rice um and preferably sprout it, like not even cooked, sprout it, preferably right. So quinoa, fonio, wild rice, not black rice, and preferably sprouted wild rice. Maybe I'll do a video on how to sprout wild rice. If you would like a video like that, please put that in the um in the in the comment section. Um so I would not eat buckwheat, amaranth, even though those are healthier grains, for fibroids, they're not good. Okay, can we drink the teas while fasting? Absolutely. These teas don't have any weird like ingredients in them. They're not caloric. They're just herbs. So if you have my herbs and you're trying to fast on them, they're perfect for fasting on because they're full of minerals. Um, does, do these tips work for uterine polyps? These tips that I gave you help for all reproductive issues. Let me say that again. These tips that I gave you help for all reproductive issues. Okay. Mary Barn, Barnor, I received my order and have been drinking for almost a week. I love it. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. Um, Yes, what did you order, Mary? That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. OB, OBGYN is trying to suggest a uterine fibroid embolization. I do not want this. So, yeah, I mean, I understand that they they offer what they have at their disposal and what they've learned, and I don't blame you for not wanting it. There are lots of women who get it, and they they're fine with it. Um, and then there are some women who get it and it doesn't do what they claim that it's going to do, but ultimately an embolization is not going to stop you from, you know, having the reason that you got fibroids go away. Do you know what I mean? So I don't blame you. You don't need an embolization. You, what you can do is take care of your body and the fibroids can shrink the symptoms can go away you just have to be patient and let your body do what it's going to do thank you for sharing that shy so sweet 1920 artist dc i can't say your name thank you for the thumbs up yes please do a video on um the um wild rice how to sprout it how to sprout wild rice i don't have oh yes i have a pen i will make myself a note how to sprout route wild rice. Any other video ideas you guys can chat 
in the um, comment section as well. Okay, excellent. Okay. Thanks for the information. I love bread. I know. I, I know. I, I hear you on that. I'm one of the people who would go to the restaurant and the bread basket would come and I'm like filling up on the bread before my meal even came. And it was one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why I was sick. We got to get off the bread. Don't find, don't try to find a substitute because there is no substitute for bread. For healing, there's like, if you're just trying to get off bread and you don't care about the fibroids or the reproductive issue you have, sure, there's a substitute. There is no substitute for bread. Now, you can take um, vegetables and um, you can um, make crap, dehydrate dehydrated crackers and stuff like that but there's nothing that's going to give you that texture that bread has there's there's just nothing nothing's that's not going to happen <laughs> okay what about making your own milk absolutely i have youtube videos on my channel how to make al almond milk how to make hemp seed milk you can make pumpkin seed milk uh sunflower seed milk you can make whatever kind of milk you have you want you just take one cup of whatever nut or seed it is, preferably a raw nut or seed, because I've, I've actually never used a um, a roasted nut or seed to make milk. Milk, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't. And the only one that you that I have used that you do not have to soak before making the 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 milk is hemp seeds. Um, one cup to four cups of water, or one cup to three cups of water, if you want your milk a little bit creamier. So. That is definitely something you can do. That's awesome. Can I make milk out of the other nuts too? Oh, yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> Except chia seeds. I have not, I don't think you can make milk out of chia seeds. I feel a headache when I want to fast. Why? Because your body, when you want to fast or when you're fasting. That's, that's two different answers. So if you feel a headache when you want to fast, like you're thinking about fasting, that's resistance. That could be the enemy trying to get you not to fast. Or like your body is like, oh my gosh, she's going to be without eat. Let's, let's make her feel like she's, you know, going to die if she fasts. So, you know, so you put the brakes on. But the other reason that you, if you're saying you get a headache when you fast, it is because you are, that's toxins, that's toxins loosening up in your body and they're swimming around your bloodstream and so you get headaches. That's a detox symptom. So in order to get rid of detox symptoms, you have to do things like detox methods, which I teach in my 90-day program to help uh, get rid of the toxic waste that is in your body. Helps usher it out. Sea moss, bye-bye anemia, liver cleanse. Wow, you bought everything just about good for you i love can i just tell y'all i love green sea moss it is fabulous i love it in my food i love to put it on my body i love to drink it like i the, the, the way i take the green sea moss is i take about a half a cup of the gel that i've made um or up to a cup and then I mix it with a little bit more water and I squeeze some lime juice in it and I just drink it down. It's fabulous. It does wonders. I love the green sea moss. Female hygiene products would be good video to do. I do have that in my 90 day program, but I don't have that. Mine would be pretty boring because I don't use much stuff. Like women are... In general, like product junkies, we got all these products. I I don't do that anymore because I know that the more junk we put on our bodies, um, the worse things are with the reproductive issues. So I try to be simple. Or are you talking about like pads and tampons and stuff like that? If you are, I do have that on my YouTube channel. <laughs> pretty and good for you <laughs> how much fat slows down the detox process <laughs> i think i might know why you're asking me that question 
So any fat slows down the detox uh, process. So if you are like, say you're on a fruit fast and you eat like a handful of nuts, like maybe an ounce of nuts, that's going to slow it down. So any fat slows down the detox process. But if you need to slow it down so you can hack it, then do it. Um, uh, Pretty and good for you. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. Okay, yeah, bread and rice are my struggles. Yeah, just get it, get it off. Just make up your mind that you're not going to eat um, any bread or rice. Just like Daniel in, I think it's um, Daniel chapter one, I think he's, it's verse eight, but he purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself with the king's delicacies. Look at bread and rice like the king's delicacies for your situation right now. It's not bad for everybody, but for somebody who's struggling with reproductive issues, it is. Our plant-based bunch. Hey there, how are you? How are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. I started following you um, again on Facebook. Somehow I got disconnected from you. I love your channel. You guys should go watch. Go look at our plant-based bunch um, on Instagram and Facebook. And I think you even have a YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken. Can I eat mushrooms? Absolutely. Mushrooms are fabulous. Um, I only like to eat them whenever they're cooked, though. <laughs> That's just me. Yes, been fasting and got very bad headache, but it's because the body is detoxing. Yes, and you need to um, uh, employ some detox methods to help usher those toxins out, like um, doing an enema, do sauna, sweat, stuff like that. I bought the liver, the wound one, and the bye bye anemia. And the water. Oh, wow. Okay. That is fabulous. I hope you're enjoying them. Thank you. Okay, London Woman 1, is green tea bad for fibroids? The caffeine in green tea is bad for fibroids. Caffeine is horrible for fibroids. And I see coaches all over the internet saying, if you have fibroids, you should drink green tea. And maybe they have some reason why they're saying it and I really don't know what it is and I'm not bashing anybody who tells their audience to drink green tea. But... And because there might be a good reason why they're saying it, but I'm saying that it's not good because it has caffeine in it and caffeine is a womb destroyer. Let me say that again. Caffeine, I don't care where it comes from, is a womb destroyer. It's not good for um, fibro fibroids. It's not good for your kidneys. If you're, if you're anxious and stressed out all the time, it's not, it's just not good. Okay. Let's see, thinking about the sea moss one now. <laughs> well, you're welcome to it. I love that stuff. It's fabulous. My niece, I was talking to her the other day. She was one of my first orders, right? And I'm talking about this because anyway, my niece, her name is Janelle and she uses sea moss. That's been a thing that she does. And she was like, I love green sea moss. She said, I had never heard of it before. And she said, I can tell my skin is different, everything. And she had only been taking it a few days. So, I, I mean, I just love it. <laughs> what about making a video using certain detergent to wash clothes? I think I have one on my YouTube channel. Yeah, my husband and I... Um, <laughs> we're at odds with that. He wants to use Tide. I'm like, no, we're not using Tide. <laughs> or anything else that is um, toxic. I use seventh generation. Sometimes I use Method. And I forget the other one that I used. That's right, I do. I've been blogging every day. Yes, you do have a YouTube channel. Excellent, a plant-based bunch. Um, Chelsea, yes, the teas smell amazing. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. Have any, has anybody used the womb tea to steam yet? Has anybody used that? I think I was, I'm going to do a steaming video. I'm not, y'all are not going to see me steam, but I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to do it. How about that? 
Chelsea, the teas smell amazing. So good. So glad to hear that. Please, how can I get low speed juicer in Amazon and gone and in Ghana? I I don't know, honey. I wish I could tell you that. Um I can't tell you. I don't know. I wish that I had an answer. You know what? I like I I don't know what I would do. There's something, but you know what? But what I would do, this is what I would do. I say, I don't know what I would do. I would get the juicer I could get. And I would use that juicer. And I'd, I'd do what I had to do. So I healed on a juicer that wasn't a slow masticating juicer. I had a champion. I still have the champion. It's a good juicer. It's just not a slow cold press juicer. And I did most of my beginning parts of my healing journey years ago on that juicer. So use what you've got. That's what I'll say. Yes, I'm referring to pads and tampons. Was wondering what your thoughts were on period panties and menstrual cup. Okay, so I have a video on my channel about the pads. Um, I could I could update it because it is it's old. Um, I did recently in the last year or so do one on period panties. And I, I have never used a menstrual cup before. I have clients that use the menstrual cup and swear by the menstrual cup, but I've, I've never used it before. Um, I, I think the my phobia about it is like, what do you do if you're out and you have to empty it? <laughs> like, I'm just like, what do you do? So that's why I, I don't know about that one, but okay. I'll make a note of that to maybe update that. But if anybody wants to know, my favorite napkins are Rael, R-A-E-L. I, I love those. I absolutely love them. Anyway, but everybody's got their favorites. Wow, no green tea. I drink green tea and elderberry. Elderberry is fabulous with turmeric and ginger in in the morning, but I do at least half a gallon of water. But that's not going to combat the effects of the caffeine. But I'm glad you drink at least a half a gallon of water. Excellent. Get up to a gallon <clears throat> or a gallon of liquid in a day. I was going to ask you about steaming. <laughs> yeah, so if you have that womb tea on the back, um, it should have, if it doesn't, it should have the instructions on how to make a steam. If not, just go to the page where you purchased the womb tea and the instructions are there. Um, because you can steam with it. You can even do douche with it. You can douche with it. My mom loves the tea. She said they are yum. I'm so glad to hear that because there's a lot of bitter herbs in those teas. <laughs> so thank you, Lord, for making the tea taste yummy to people. <laughs> I read that. I was like, what? I can steam it? Yep. Yes, you can. I need more information on this steaming, please. Yeah, go to the website, and I, I think I will do it. Um, um, I'll do a video on that. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. Hey, Chelsea, is this Morgan? This is Morgan from the UK. Hey there, sweetheart. Thank you. So glad you're doing teas. How long do your teas last for? So any herb, any herb, um, for first of all, my teas are fresh. My my herbs are fresh, so um, they last about a year, okay. But anything, day by day by day, it loses its per potency. So the potency that it has today is not going to be the same potency in a year, but it still has its properties because it's dried. But it. It it does, as time goes on, any tea, I don't care what it is, it's going to lose its potency that it has had, that it had from the, from the, from the start. Okay. All right. Is it external steaming? I'm sorry. I don't, about this. Okay. So, yeah. So, the way steaming works is you... So you, you prepare the herbs according to the steaming instructions. And I can't tell you that right now um, because it's just too involved. But it's on the package or on the website. And you, you, you sit over it, squat over it, or you get a, um, a um, 
like a, I have a chair. It has an opening in it. And it was a cheap chair. It was only like $25 on Amazon. You sit on it and you put a blanket around you and you let the steam go into your private parts. And what that does is the herbs go into that tissue. It helps to detoxify that area. It um, feeds you the minerals through your vagina, all that stuff. So, I, you know, I think it is a good, let me talk about steaming. I am going to do a video talking about steaming. Okay. Okay. How long does a package last? Oh, a package lasts. That's what you mean. I'm sorry. So it really depends on how much you use it, how many servings you use it. But off the top of my head, I don't know. But my packages, honestly, and some of you can speak to this, but I think I put a lot of tea in those bags. It says it's four ounces of herbs. And it is four ounces of herbs because I personally measured every last one of them. But four ounces of herbs is a lot. It's a lot of herbs. So it should last you at least a month if you, you if you, I don't know. <laughs> to answer your question, I don't know. I need to probably go through and measure by tablespoon and tell you that, but I have not done that. But I want to say at least a month. I'm not, what I wanted to do is make sure that you had enough product that you weren't saying, oh, I got to order it again and it's just a week. Like I have gotten products like that and it makes me mad. So I didn't want to do that to people. I want some of your products. You're welcome to them. Deep Rooted Herbal Blends um, dot com or you can just go to whatchelseaeats.com and click um, Deep Rooted Herbal Blends and it'll take you right there. Hey, Morgan, thank you for that love. I received that love, sweetheart. Right back at you. She who is called. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you use a bucket to steam? So if it's a if it's a stainless steel bucket, what I just suggest is just use your pot, like a stainless steel pot and steam. Use that. That's what I use. Um, but you there are you don't even use a bucket because it's plastic. And if the herbs are hot, it's gonna leach. So yep. Yes, you did very generous. Thank you very much, she who is called. I love that. Thank you for that. Appreciate it very much. Bless you, Chelsea. Thank you. Okay, is there chasberry in any of these teas? No, I don't like chas Chase chasberry. It's a it's good herb, but I think it's it's for I just don't like it. Um, <laughs> you said it doesn't. You find it does not work well for me. No, I don't use that one. When you do the steaming video, maybe you can show the chair you use. I will do that. I will do that. Gotcha. Okay, looks like that's all the questions. I'm so glad to be here with you all. Oh, and by the way, the other testimony too is my daughter-in-law. Um, she's been using the hair growth oil and her hair. And I wish that we had taking, taken a picture. Her hair has grown at least an inch, like this much, at least. I was in shock yesterday when I saw her hair. Um, and she's been using it maybe about six weeks, six, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. I could not believe it. Now, I'm not sitting here claiming that your hair is going to grow an inch if you use the hair growth oil. I'm not saying that. But... <laughs> I'm just telling you, she's been using it every day and not like a whole bunch of it. She's just been kind of putting it in her, her um, hair. Hey. She's been putting it in her hair and in her conditioner whenever she washes her hair and it's fabulous. So anyway, anyway, I love y'all. And um, <laughs> I'll see y'all later. This was fun. I like the Instagram live. I haven't done one in a long time. So I guess... Maybe I need to start doing them more often. If y'all want me to do Instagram lives, please comment below 
and I will see y'all later. So let me just pray. Lord, I just thank you for every woman who's in the sound of my voice who will listen to this video, God. And I ask that you would bless them, that you would heal them, that you would fill them with joy. And whatever it is that they're looking for in their lives, that you would lead them and guide them to you so that you can show them whatever it is they really need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Take care. Wait, how you turn this thing off?